I don't know if this is the time to raise the alarms and why bulls really should be watching this market every day to look for that opportunity to, to find a bottom. We just rattled off five months in a row of positive gains. We come into April where the seasonals and the historical metrics are very positive. Obviously, April's a letdown. I think we came into the month where it's like 73% chance that April's green after two consecutive quarters of 10% gains and more. And obviously, this was one of the 27% times. So the question I asked myself over the weekend is, what happens when you have five green months in a row followed by a red one? Has that happened a lot historically? And what happens thereafter? This is actually the 31st time in the S&P 500's history, at least going back to 1950, that we've seen five green months and then a red sixth one to break that chain. Uh, one month forward returns, 22 times up, eight times down for a 1.88% average gain. Three months later, 25 times up, five times down for a 3.86% gain. Six months later, 27 times up, three times down for an 8.95% gain. And a year out, 24 times up, six times down for a 10.24% average gain. 30 occurrences is not a small sample size. In fact, I remember my CFA studies where they said N equals 30. You have to have 30 occurrences for it to be statistically significant. So this is something that I can't ignore. It's not like one of those, well, this has happened 11 times or the yield curve's inverted seven times after the war and and you know while that's happened 100% it's only 7 so that's not statistically significant take it with a grain of salt this is statistically significant um so i i look at this market and see a 5 or 6% correction while the sentiment is bad right now that's why this week for bulls from my point of view you just need sideways movement you need basing here if the nasdaq and the s&p aren't below last week's lows by the time we get through all these earnings bulls have a setup with them going into the middle part of this year where it's not as bad as it seems right now and everyone was on one side. And of course, when you get a flush in the market, everyone panics. But if this is a typical market and it hews to what history usually provides us, there still may be gains ahead. And Tony, I think you're right. This may be a good place to start looking long, even if it's still good news is bad news. Apple down 15, 20% into a 5% move in the market. Apple's in everything. If Apple even catches a bid, which it hasn't, even catch a bit, there'll be no stopping this market. Volatility under 16 now. It had its volatility spike. Gold had its had its price spike. The market had its big spike lower. You two even talked about, I'm talking about Chris and Ilya, that 5,000 uh, 5, number kind of, you know, it, it wants to yeah. be attracted to that. When we were 5,080, where we are right now, we got to a little bit under 5,000. I mean, I can't see how the narrative changes. It almost seems like a perfect setup to me. It almost seems too good to be true at this point. In my eyes. So I don't disagree. And Lord help us if Tesla catches a bit. First of all, I don't disagree with any of that. And I want to say one other thing that I think you'll be happy about. I don't think, I think you're actually reading it. I think you're reading it a little bit. I think the things that you're looking at are all valid. But I think the real key here is the bond market. And I think that that's, I've been arguing that it's not about bonds stock. Bonds don't give us any indication, really. I mean, no, I understand, but I think bonds are cheap relative. I think stocks are not cheap. So if you're looking for something, I, I, that's I, all. I agree with that narrative, right. too. So, so I think the bond market's been the player, and you're seeing how fast they go up today, like that. how fast you know they just turned around. Mm -hmm. um, I think stocks are a lot more wishy-washy. You, you, you know, I think you're going to see a rotation. You do have stocks beaten up, like Apple is beaten up, and and – and Tesla is beaten up and Boeing is beaten up. You can easily see those stocks turn around on earnings Nvidia or whatever. Nvidia was down else. $100. I mean, that's that's unheard of. Yeah, but it's back. It's already rallied back. What? It's 800. It's not 900 or I know, but it was down $80 thousand. on Friday. It's, it's already rallied back like, you know, 30. I'm just saying they $40. all had a capitulation moment. I don't know if that means it's it's clear skies, you know, for the rest of the year. I'm not saying that, but for right now it seems like you got a little bit of a floor in the market for the Tony coming coming into the month of April. Uh, global CTA positioning was in the 100th percentile in terms of net longs. Coming into this know week, what it was that in the means to be honest with you. CP it, it basically means the market hist by hi historical standards, uh, short term trend chasers have never been more long. Okay, now we're in the 68th percentile this week. So, so that, I, I look yes, at that as a reverse indicator. I, I, I think that's a that's, well, that's a good thing. We were we were oversaturated coming into April. Everyone and their mother was long, right? Who's going to get on the bus? Now, the trade's been cleared out. All of those people, all of the weak hands who were chasing to the upside the last few weeks, they've been washed out of this market. Right. And so, you know, it's not as crowded as it once were, was, which is the point. And if we can get through earnings and just simply base here the next few days, the setup is probably more favorable moving forward 
uh, because the, the fear is here. And everyone is now saying, I told you so. This is why I wasn't long in January, February. But here, here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, we're back to where we started the year. So time to cut rallying again, I guess. I watch volatility. It'll tell you. I think volatility has been the best indicator. I think volatility has been the best indicator. I think bonds have been the most difficult one. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at some of the old bellwethers have been really tough as well because they haven't carried this market. But I would caution you right here after that last down move, I'd be very nervous that this is a head fake. Yeah, sure. And it very well may be. I think it's a, I think it's a head fake. I think it's a head and fake. And Tom, can I, can, yeah. I, can I put a little meat on the bones to your comment about volatility? Sure. For people who are watching the market Thursday night, uh, when the whole Israel responding to Iran chain of events was going on, I tweeted out that oil vol and gold vol hadn't gone up over the course of the events, even when oil was sitting up three bucks and, and gold was sitting near its highs of the day. And because oil wasn't going up, the market wasn't pricing in that additional geopolitical risk premium. I was talking with Dylan and he said, you know, this is odd, right? If this was really the thing that was going to stick, wouldn't vol be going higher? So the fact that it didn't, it was kind of the tell that the market wasn't ready to push its chips in. And then sure enough, everything reversed. So when you're seeing oil vol come off the board, gold vol come off the board, uh, even bond vol coming back in a little bit here, equity vol, of course, coming back in, it's it's something that you'd want to, you'd like to see as part of the closure of this chain of events. And so now that's been exhausted, right? Oil is back below where it was prior to this Iranian general being killed in Damascus. Gold, while it's not there yet, it has seen a significant down move as the silver. I think this catalyst is exhausted and now we're focusing back on the Fed and earnings and economic data. A hell of a rally in gold and oil this morning. Plus you have, pet, well, gold's down $5, but yes, it is $35 off of it. it's, its lows. Um, and you have Passover, which might put a little bit of um, cap on the tensions in the Middle East. So. Who knows? I don't know, man. I'm going to hope. All, all guesses. I can solve all the Middle Eastern problems by just forcing everybody to eat Jewish brisket instead of Texas brisket. <laughs> I'd solve all the problems in the whole world. They don't move almost, to Texas. Almost overnight. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? The, so give me the Vecchio call for the rest of the week here. Because we didn't get your call on Sunday night. Chop sideways. That's it. If I'm doing pot odds, if, if you know you say like it has to be directional, I think down still is the way to go in the short term. But this is about weathering the events, right? This is, you, you want to weather events yeah. when you're in a down market. Once yeah. once the bad news comes to pass and you don't see those swings lower, it yeah. means we haven't priced it anymore. So let's weather some things here before we can start to get to a, a more a good, optimistic. That's a good forward. switch. That's a good flip for Vecchio. What I like about, what I like about this call, Mr. Vecchio, is that it shows you, you can be um, two-sided. Like a oh, two-face. Uh, I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, I mean, to no, no. I mean, Tony, you you pointed out five thousand was a level that we were talking about because yeah. the technical move was if you get below fifty one sixty seven, you have a measure move down to five thousand. At that point, like it doesn't matter if you're a bull fundamentally, just let the market do its thing and stand aside. And now that we're down here, and you look where we closed on Friday, like five thousand three, that's pretty darn close. Well, we think we overshot forty nine sixty or forty nine seventy, but on around. Something around like geopolitical and 30 tensions. handles usually like for a technician here's what i'm gonna give you some pushback if you're saying five thousand is supposed to hold where do you hold them to do you know 49 80 70 60 50 40 i don't know that's the point of of it with technical analysis that drives me a little yeah. nuts you go 30 handles which is a, which is outside of an expected move for any daily move you say well i'm gonna get out here you know uh, it's a hard one it's a hard one to say. No, I get it. And there's there's no holy grail, right? This isn't right. like Indiana Jones and the last crusade where like I've chosen wisely and now I have the perfect trading strategy that works 100 percent of the time. Sure. So yeah. Totally agree. With but that. there are there are overshoots. And but you now you're seeing the basing in the areas where you'd like to see basing technically. It's not the prettiest thing, but patience. Let's we're gonna call let's let the market nervous, tell us which way we're gonna call this a nervous rally. I think it is nervous. I think it is a nervous rally. Yeah. 100%. It's fair. It's a nervous rally. It's good. It's it's still good for premium sellers. Our our data numbers are the highest they've been in almost a year. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Very yeah. good.